April 6th, Friday, April 6th, and it's snowing. Snowing in April. Uh, I want to tell a joke today. And one uh, disclaimer, it's a filthy, dirty joke. Um, so if you're under the age of 18, you shouldn't be hearing this joke. If you're at work, do not listen to this joke. It's simply not appropriate. Um, so if my nephews are watching, your parents wouldn't like this, so stop watching right now. Do not listen to this joke. <sighs> Alright, well with that out of the way, I'll begin. So Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson are sitting in the parlor of their flat on, I want to say Baker Street, 222 Baker Street. Let's go with that. Watson's reading the paper and Holmes is staring dreamily at the fire in the hearth. And Holmes breaks silence by saying to Watson, My good man, how long have we known each other? And Watson says, Well, Holmes, I, I feel as though I've known you my whole life. Quite, quite says Holmes. We are each other's closest and longest friends. And it's no, uh, it's no secret that I'm very fond of you, Watson. Oh, and I'm fond of you too, Holmes, replies Watson. We've had many adventures together, haven't we, Watson? Yes, yes, quite a few. There's one adventure we've never undertaken, though, is there, Watson? Watson's kind of perplexed. He says, what are you driving at, Holmes? Sherlock says, Watson, neither one of us has ever known the intimacy of another man. And I think it expedient, for the purposes of scientific exploration, that we remedy that oversight. Watson's face turns red. And he says to Holmes, Holmes, what do you say? Sherlock says, Watson, it's time you and I engage in the act of sodomy. Watson's a little bit surprised by this proposal and a little bit shaken. But after a few minutes of cajoling and arguing the merits of the idea, he finally says, Well, Holmes, I, I can't fault your logic. How, how would we begin? So Sherlock says, Well, since I'm the thinner and the more spry of the two of us, I think I should do the heavy lifting, as it were. So Watson agrees. And he proceeds to drop his trousers present his pasty white bubbly English ass to Holmes. Holmes goes over to the ice box in the kitchen and removes from it a large lemon meringue pie. Watson says, what are you going to do with that? All in good time, my good man, all in good time. Sherlock unbuttons his pants with his free hand and steps out of his own trousers to reveal a semi-erect penis. He then walks over to his friend Watson and plants the lemon rank pie, smashes it against his friend's posterior, smearing meringue and lemon filling all over his butt cheeks. Watson gasps. <gasps> it's cold. And Sherlock smiles an impish smile. Begins to, begins to take some of the filling and stroke his own genitals with it. They play at this foreplay for a little while with Holmes smearing some of the filling and meringue all over Watson's 
saggy old English balls, his wrinkled taint, and of course his anus. And when Holmes is fully erect, he penetrates his longtime companion's rectum. Watson lets out no noise whatsoever, but a cooing purr at the pleasant sensation of his friend thrusting in and out. This goes on for several minutes. Finally, the two of them end the sodomy experiment in climax. Holmes grabs a dish towel, wipes the sweat off of his brow, hands it to his friend, taps him on the shoulder. Says, How was that, my good man? Watson says, It was surprisingly pleasant. I expected much more pain, Holmes. Why do you suppose there wasn't any pain? To which Holmes replies, Lemon entry, my dear Watson. Lemon entry. There you go.